Hey everyone, Eric here. Today, I wanna to share with you some of my tips for creating concept design alternatives. Basically seeing two different designs in one model until you're ready to make a decision on what to move forward with. So I hope it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, sometimes in the design process, we either intentionally want to show two or three different concepts in order to get the client or the stakeholders feedback. We do that on purpose. Sometimes we'll, we, we know which option we wanna move forward with as a designer, but not always, you know, can we just pick that and go? We kind of make sure that the client's feedback is taken into consideration. So when you've got a model and you've got some pieces in it already, I wanna look at some ways to maybe streamline or optimize that process to make it a little bit easier so that you're not saving a duplicate model and then saying, oh, here's model one, here's model two, and then in which case, if you change a door, change a wall, now all of a sudden the models are out of sync. So I wanna do those concept alternatives inside of one model, and uh, let's just go ahead and do it right now. So I've got my model, you've seen this before. I'm gonna plug it, it's from our Scan SketchUp Campus course. Um, I'm gonna reference that at the end. I'm just gonna kind of get started here. So what works really well about this model in particular, or this design, is that it's an interior design project. So when I say concept alternatives, I guess I'll be a little bit more specific and say, in this case, furnishing alternatives. And let me go ahead and put myself into the kitchen here, just kind of explain the space. If you haven't seen this model before, it's a co-working space and there's a kitchen and try not to get stuck in a wall. If I look over here, there's, uh, this is sort of what I'm calling the default concept. So if you come in, you've got a kitchen and you've got, well, maybe actually it's better to see it in plan view. There you go, reception area, kitchen, workstations, lounge, and sort of this built-in banquet seating. So just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and flip this part of the design, this kind of section over here. We're gonna flip that around so that we can see what that might look like um, if it was, uh, if we rearranged it and said, well, maybe that's not exactly where things need to go. So the first thing I need to do is I've actually kind of already done it, but basically is you wanna kind of group the different things. Now, you could make it a component, but if you want to make changes, like when I, when I do my alternative design, if you make a change, like move a table, of course, it's going to change it in both designs. So in this case, what I've done is I've got everything's a component, like chairs, component, tables, a component, all of it, everything's a component. But then when I put them in a container, that container is a group. So that was sort of done intentionally. So I've got kind of my lounge or area and seating area group, and I've got this um, workstation kind of co-working space. So let me switch over to perspective. Maybe that's a little bit easier to see it. Now, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a, a group out of both of those. If I hold shift here, I can get both of those. And then I'm going to copy it using my keyboard shortcut and paste it in place. So now you can't see it because they're sitting on top of each other, but I actually have two of the same seating arrangement. Now for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and use, or just to kind of speed up, I'm gonna use the scale by negative one tool of course, you could use the new flip in 2023 if you prefer to use that method. And it's a little bit confusing here because I have two sets of furniture sitting on top of each other. I have my original, which I'm calling alternative or concept one. And then I have my flipped or my inverted version, which I'm gonna call concept two. So the first step in this process is right now everything's showing. We need separate tags so that we can uh, toggle things on and off. I already have everything tagged. I have my furnishings, I have my details, my custom woodwork, all that stuff's already tagged. And I'm gonna leave those alone. So this is basically a container tag for each of the design alternatives. One, two tags. First one, I'm gonna call Alt-1, does not matter necessarily what you wanna call it at home, and Alt-2. So Alt-1, again, I said is sort of the default option. So this sort of outside container group containing all of this arrangement, this furniture, I'm just gonna put that on one. And then if I turn that off, you can see that disappears. And then this kind of flipped version where I put the co-working tables over closer to the reception desk, I'm gonna call that Alt-2. Now that's fine and good. So there they go. I can switch back and forth between them. It's a little bit tricky when you do it just using the tags here because it's not difficult to say, hey, what does this look like? And then you go Alt-1 on, Alt-2 off. But to me, especially if I'm doing a live presentation, I don't even really want to show the two alternatives overlapping at the same time. I want to show one and then the other, especially if they're different. In this case, they're just mirrored or flipped, but if they're very different, I would want something a little bit more seamless than just tagging, uh, turning the tags on and off. 
So what I want to do here is I want to come in and it doesn't really matter. I'm going to start on this perspective just because I want to add one to the end of my little scene sequence here. And I'm going to call this one Alt 1. And I'm going to make sure that Alt 2 is turned off and that scene is updated. And I'm going to add that same scene. In this case, I'm going to call it Alt 2. And then I'm going to flip those, Alt 1 and Alt 2. Okay. So now that's great. So I can flip between these two scenes and I can see what that design looks like from this particular camera angle. But I've got a couple different camera angles I want to look at. I've got this view from the lounge area, which was originally, this was, all, this was originally when it was designed as a lounge. And then I've got this view from the kitchen. So I want to see what both of those look like. But if I hit the Alt-1, it takes me back to the lounge. So this is a really kind of simple trick or fix that I like to recommend is that you can just disable the camera location. So in this case, it's not about where I'm viewing the alternative one versus alternative two. It's actually more about just saving the tag states. So I don't have to do that two tag or three tag turn off and on little juggle that I had to do. Alt one and Alt two both have camera location turned off. So if I wanted to, I could pick any perspective. Like in this case, this perspective kitchen is not my final view. You can see it's got everything turned on. More importantly is I would click on the perspective kitchen to set the camera angle and then Alt-1 to turn the tag state on. Same thing if I wanted to compare that same view to Alt-2 and export that, I could go back and forth and either show that on a screen or export those very easily. Same thing works from that opposite angle on that scene that I've already saved. If I just go Alt-1, this is kind of the default option, what it looked like before. And then this is the alternative two. It's the other alternative, like the, um, the, the inverted or the flipped um, alternative. So what's cool about that is because we're not locked to camera angle, if I wanted to come over here, if I was doing a live presentation and I said, okay, well, when you come in, if the client says, well, what does it look like? I really like it. I'm having a hard time deciding which one I like better. They both work really well, actually. Um, you could say, well, what does it look like from, from the door when you come in? And then all you have to do is click Alt-1, Alt-2. This is what Alt-1 looks like. You can then look around the room. I like that. You can go Alt-2, look around the room and say, yeah, that works. Um, you know, of course, we may want to treat this bookshelf a little bit differently. The way that we had it sort of embedded into a nook on the other alternative, that kind of tells you that maybe, you know, you'd also have to treat the wall around the bookshelf as well to kind of get that integrated um, as well. So again, if I just kind of wanted to spin around, the only thing to keep in mind here is that if you are showing something in plan view, remember that scenes, remember uh, sections are saved to styles, not scenes. So in this case, uh, the Alt-1 and Alt-2 doesn't work in plan view because I would need the section cut style saved. So if you were working with sections, you just have to keep that in mind. You may want to just sort of either tell the story through section cuts or tell the story through perspectives because the way that they work is going to be slightly different just between the two of them. So that's actually it. I mean, you can do as many concepts as you want and you just follow the same process. So make sure that you have a group uh, that sort of represents your alternative, that that's tagged to its own name so it's clear. And then that's assigned or toggled off or on depending on whether you want to show it. And that's assigned a scene. And then def uh, basically unchecking that camera location, that's totally an option for you as well, because in that case, it does give you that sort of freedom and flexibility to, to move around the space. And you can just toggle those alternatives off and on without having to go again back into the tags menu and turn everything on and then turn things off one, on, uh, one by one. So as always, I hope you found something useful in this video. I mean, even if it's just, hey, that camera location thing, I haven't used that in a while. That's a good reminder that you can use that to your advantage and sort of use it a little bit differently than how you maybe normally use scenes to sort of lock and fix that camera location. So let us know what you think in the comments either way. So I use that information that you give me, take that feedback, incorporate it into the next series of videos we make. So either way, let us know what you think and while you're there commenting, don't forget to like, uh, share, and subscribe. You know, we with subscriptions, you get those notifications, especially because we do more than just uh, here at SketchUp. Uh, we do more than just the YouTube videos. We do live streams on Fridays, and we do SketchUp Campus. And speaking of which, this model here behind me, I did say I was going to plug it um, when I'm not 
doing these videos on YouTube and doing them live streaming. I am building the campus content. So that's learn.sketchup.com. So this model that I used here in this little demo, uh, you can see it um, rendered here behind me on the splash page. That's basically a full length course starting from scratch all the way to building out this model, including this tip that I shared just now about creating concept design alternatives. So, so I'm going to leave you there. And I want to say, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.